an anti-hero, a protagonist or notable figure who was conspicuously lacking in Jesus heroic Christ. qualities. According to Missouri State, qualities of a hero include sacrifice, determination, loyalty, courage, and selflessness. So who was the greatest anti-hero to ever exist? It is the prince of the ultimate warrior race, the greatest Saiyan to exist, the legendary Prince Vegeta. Hello, my name is Bugsy and today I'll be dissecting how Vegeta is the greatest anti-hero to exist, not only in the anime world, but in all media. To fully appreciate and grasp how Vegeta became an anti-hero, we must deep dive into his progression as a character, from one of the most dangerous villains we have ever seen to the anti-hero of Dragon Ball Z. Yes, we all know that Vegeta has constantly been taking losses after losses in the anime, mainly due to Toriyama not liking the character. This is all pivotal to his journey to an anti-hero. Remember to leave a like and comment on the video if you enjoy it. Now, let's deep dive into how Toriyama created the greatest anti-hero of all time. Vegeta is a character who has always relied on his own strength. He never had anyone rival his strength until he met Goku, or as he refers to him, Kakarot. One of Vegeta's early and famous quotes being, strength is the only thing that matters in this world. Everything else is just a delusion for the weak. This was said when Nappa informed him that Planet Vegeta had been destroyed due to a meteor colliding with the planet. However, rumors said that it was Frieza who ended up destroying the planet. Vegeta does not care that the planet has been destroyed. All he cares about is becoming the strongest in the universe. This is something we do not expect from a prince of a warrior race, especially one that is named after his father. Why does he not care about his race? Why is he more upset regarding the destruction of his race? Well, because his goals outweigh the planet and his race. We see he has no regards for anyone or anything that interferes with his goals. The audience is seeing a truly terrifying menace and villain not seen in all of Dragon Ball Z. The first thing Vegeta does when all the Z fighters arrive is propose playing a game with the Cybermen. In the manga, Vegeta specifically says, how about each one of you fights one at a time for sport? Vegeta sends out the Cybermen to take care of the Z fighters only to find out that they are more formidable than they appear. When one of the Cybermen fail to destroy Tien, Vegeta quickly disposes of him. The Z fighters are horrified to see this amount of cruelty on someone who should have been considered an ally. Well, we know how Vegeta treats those who work under him. After Goku appears and we see that he has a power level of over 9000, Vegeta realizes he may have to take him seriously. Goku breaks Nappa's back and we see the true evil which is Vegeta. Nappa and Vegeta have been been through many battles and traveled the galaxy for years and once Vegeta deemed him useless he was thrown into the air and destroyed with the notorious quote I have no use for a Saiyan who can't move. Goku has now seen a horde not seen before. Not even King Piccolo was this evil. The craziest part being that Nappa could have been healed and actually wasn't deemed useless. However Vegeta saw that he was no longer needed for his goals. Goku and Vegeta have an epic standoff and the prince realizes he has a rival. Someone who was able to closely match him in speed, power, and tenacity. Now I know people are curious about when I will be getting to the part of how Vegeta is an anti-hero. Be patient. All of the backstory is very important to how Vegeta is truly an anti-hero. After we see Vegeta lose using his most famous and powerful move, the Gallic Gun, which could have sent the earth into oblivion, our prince is in trouble and full of rage. He turns into a great ape and Goku with the help of Krillin, Gohan, and Yajirobe, they were able to defeat Vegeta and had the potential to kill him. However, Due to Goku not wanting to kill a super talented fighter, he tells Krillin to let him go. This enrages Vegeta because this is not what a Saiyan is supposed to be like. They're supposed to be evil, barbaric, and violent to a T. Vegeta then leaves into the escape pod and we fast forward to the Namek Saga. The Namek Saga is the beginning of Vegeta's anti-hero arc. While we have witnessed him being a real villain, we start to see glimpses of him becoming the anti-hero. Vegeta needed to recover and he needed information on the Dragon Balls. We see Vegeta interrogating the Namekians regarding the information of the Dragon Balls. Once he got the information or was refused the information, he would slaughter them, violently killing the Mechians with a grin on his face. Vegeta would interrogate the members of the Ginyu Force he would have standoffs with and would violently remove them from existence. However, he needed the help of Krillin and Gohan to achieve his goal, even though he had no intention of keeping them alive. Fast forward, Vegeta and the Z fighters around him get demolished by Raccoon, and we see what could have been the end of Vegeta. However, Goku comes to the rescue and this only 
only angers Vegeta further. He continues to get saved by the low-class warrior, someone who he views as beneath him, yet continues to pass him in strength. Vegeta once given a sense of being killed off the remaining Ginyu Force and believes he has gotten strong enough to become the legendary Super Saiyan. Vegeta versus Frieza. The battle that showed us that Vegeta was indeed not the Super Saiyan and not even close to rival Frieza. The horrible realization for Vegeta when he did not achieve the form was shocking. We finally see Vegeta break down and tell Goku why he is an evil man. Vegeta crying and begging Kakarot to kill Frieza was something that made grown men cry and see he really was a damaged man. Losing his race was important to him no matter how often he tried to play it off. Him being a slave to Frieza for years and not being the strongest in the universe turned Vegeta to the man he was. At this point, Vegeta now becomes allies with Goku and the Z fighters. Yes, I do understand that he was about to die, but at this very moment, he realized that if he was given an opportunity, if he's allowed to come back to life, he would ally himself with Goku and the Z fighters because they have been helping him even though they did view him as an enemy. He realizes how desperate he is and decides to abandon his pride. Frieza then kills Vegeta and we see in the original run that Vegeta comes back and actually sees Goku as the Super Saiyan and we see the proud smile on the prince. This is the first glimpse of the anti-hero that we see in Vegeta. How does this result in him slowly becoming an anti-hero? It is due to the fact that Vegeta is one of the protagonists in the story. Now, the Android Saga is where things get interesting. During the Android Saga, we see Vegeta training for the sole purpose of being better than Goku. Once he sees Frieza get destroyed by this mysterious warrior, it enrages him once again, especially when the warrior turned into a Super Saiyan. It was almost a mockery to the title Prince of All Saiyans. Vegeta eventually turns into a Super Saiyan during his battle with Android 19. While he turned into a Super Saiyan, he gives a speech on how and why he became a Super Saiyan. The speech shows how Goku's achievement was the reason he trained so hard to become a Super Saiyan, with the goal of surpassing him. Let's remember what the definition of an anti-hero is, a protagonist or notable figure who is conspicuously lacking in heroic qualities. At this point, Vegeta has become a protagonist in the story, but he does not display heroic qualities. He is still doing everything based on his own goals, disregarding the rest of the cast. This applies to even his son Trunks, who he disregarded all the way till the end of the Cell Saga. During the training arc between Vegeta and Trunks, we see that Vegeta has emerged from the hyperbolic time chamber very powerful. This is shown in the manga by Vegeta getting drawn significantly larger than Goku. When Piccolo implies to Vegeta that he would have to be three times stronger to even get close to Cell's power, he laughs. Not just an LOL or an LMAO type laugh, but the laugh of a man who did it. With subtle hints from Goku and Vegeta's interaction, we can assume that he achieved a form stronger than Super Saiyan. He achieved Ascended Super Saiyan, also known as Grade 2 Super Saiyan. With his new power, he decides to confront a semi-perfect Cell, which he outclasses by a large margin. Vegeta has the opportunity to defeat Cell and become the hero, but when Cell tells him he has a form even stronger than semi-perfect, it intrigues Vegeta, which we know leads to catastrophe. Vegeta's pride allows Cell to reach a perfect form, and that is when Vegeta realized he was far behind when it came to being on Cell's power level. During the Cell game, Vegeta had to sit back and watch Goku and Gohan fight Cell. After Cell starts to fight Super Saiyan 2 Gohan, and we see Gohan get the upper hand, Vegeta gets angry. He doesn't understand how a mere child was able to become stronger than him and even his rival Kakarot. When we see Goku sacrifice himself, we see Vegeta have this shock in his face. He is not surprised that Goku was willing to sacrifice himself for everyone, but the fact that he would no longer have a rival. However, after we see Cell return and decimate Trunks, we see Vegeta lose his mind. This is the first time we have seen Vegeta care for anyone besides himself. He rushes towards Cell with a valiant effort to avenge his son. This is the first time we see some heroic characteristics from Vegeta. Even though he failed, we see him apologize to Gohan because because his selfish effort led to Gohan having a broken arm. Is our anti-hero slowly turning into a hero, or is this all a facade? The Buu Saga is one of the most important sagas when it comes to the character development of Vegeta. In fact, the Buu Saga is the saga which turned Vegeta from an anti-hero to a hero. This all begins during the tournament arc where Bobbidi's henchman Popovich ends up beating the hell out of Videl. This is when he received the magic of Bobbidi, which led to his power increasing drastically. Vegeta saw this as an opportunity 
to even the playing field with Goku, especially since this was the only day Goku was going to return to the Earth. Vegeta had made up his mind to allow Bobby to enter his mind to grant him this unbound power, resulting in the amazing Majin Vegeta. Majin Vegeta was finally a true rival to Goku, and now he was able to settle the score he had been wishing for. Vegeta delivered some of the coldest and heart-wrenching speeches we have ever heard. However, the only way for him to have Goku take him seriously was killing hundreds of innocents at the tournament. Before anyone starts and goes, well listen here buddy, Kai and the Japanese version had the correct dialogue and the original was just edgy. Yes, I do understand this, but it was still epic regardless. Vegeta gives a speech to Goku about his struggles which has been pent up since the first time they had met. From the anger he feels from losing his planet, being a slave to Frieza, to always being second to the low class warrior Kakarot, and believing strength was the end of all means. He has stolen my honor and his debt must be paid. At this point, we see Vegeta is going through a male crisis and needs help. Most importantly, we see that Vegeta is truly showing how he is an anti-hero. We then hear Vegeta give this speech. I was the perfect warrior, cold and ruthless. I lived by my strength alone, uninhibited by foolish emotion. He explains how he started a family thinking it would give him power and how he enjoyed living on Earth. Once he started to become comfortable, he felt as if he lost the edge he had back when he first came to Earth. He believed that he was an evil monster and was willing to do anything to get back to the callous man he used to be. In his own words, I'd say the end more than justified to me. Vegeta has officially became an anti-hero. The small glimpses of heroic features he displayed at the end of the Cell Saga was completely undone once he became Majin Vegeta initially. Vegeta was willing to allow Majin Buu to come alive because he wanted to finish the rivalry he had with Goku. It meant more to him than his family, the Earth and everything else. However, we clearly see by the end of this moment in time, and of course, the end of the Buu saga, he did not stay this way. Now here is my reasoning as to why Vegeta is the greatest anti-hero of all time. After going through the history of Vegeta and the events that led him to the man that he has became, he was able to redeem himself in the end. I think for a character so far gone, unredeemable, and evil, no one ever believed Vegeta would become a good person. Once Vegeta knew the only way to destroy Buu was to sacrifice himself for the earth and everyone he cared for. He would not let Trunks or Goten fight with him because he knew that it would all be in vain. Telling Trunks to take care of his mother, admitting to never holding Trunks, and then doing so knowing he was not going to return. He later knocks out the boys, asks Piccolo if he would see Kakarot in the other world, even when he knew the answer was going to be no, he went through with his plan. Vegeta at that moment decided everything he wanted no longer mattered. He was going to put his selfish desires away and do what he felt was right. Vegeta blows himself up in hopes of saving the world from the dangerous Majin Buu. He started to show qualities of being a hero, which were selflessness, bravery, and sacrifice. We see him saying, Trunks, Bulma, I do this for you, and yes, even for you, Kakarot. Vegeta had officially transformed from being the anti-hero to a hero. I believe the transformation is more important than the act of being an anti-hero. This is due to the fact that many characters do not go through as much pain and suffering than decide to make the ultimate sacrifice for his loved ones. Fast forward to the end of the Buu saga when Goku and Vegeta are fighting Kid Buu, Vegeta was willing to permanently die if that is what it would take to defeat that monster. An anti-hero transitioning into a hero takes more strength than resolving to their own selfish desires. Toriyama did a great job at writing an antagonist. However, he did a perfect job at writing an anti-hero. I hope you enjoyed the video regarding the greatest anti-hero to exist. Make sure to leave a like and comment down below. Let me know if Vegeta is the greatest anti-hero in all of anime or even cinema. If you'd like to help the channel even more, please become a member or even join the Patreon. Remember, move well, study well, play well, eat well, rest well. That is the Turtle Hermit Master way. Peace. Also, long live Akira Toriyama. You will be missed and we would never forget the amazing art that you created, which is called Dragon Ball.